Hi everybody, it's John Costa here at the Documentary Media Centre in Leicester in the UK. Uh, welcome to our next Network Bulletin. Uh, it's October, the year's disappearing, so uh, let's get another one under our belt. Uh, look at what we've been doing over the last month, uh, and then also look forward to what's coming up next. Okay, so the first thing is we kicked off the month talking to our good friend Kavita Ashok, Tree for Life in New Delhi in India. We were catching up with one of our regular series of conversations with Kavita about agriculture, climate change, um, natural disasters. It's always interesting to talk to Kavita because she's very proactive on the ground, very well connected in the media, a regular radio and television uh, appearances talking about climate change. Does a lot of things out in the community as well, lots of, uh, lots of good inclusion work. Obviously been challenged like the rest of us um, in more ways than one with things around uh, COVID and lockdown and the pandemic. So it was good to catch up with Kavita and see her much more proactive back out in the community and moving forward. And next month we're looking to forward to doing something with her as well around COP26, the big climate action thing that's happening here, conference um, up in Glasgow. So look out for that next month with Kavita. Just a quick update on where we were with Iraq. You, can, you may remember in the last network bulletin we were talking about our launch of our uh, Memorandum of Understanding with the Media Training Centre, hosted by Diwaniya Radio and organised by the Women's Department of the local uh, Al Diwaniya Governor in Iraq. Uh, the good thing about, um, I think I was talking about the training that I was doing, the image that was me providing some uh, online tuition for Radio and You. Uh, the good thing about that, those guys have gone from the session I did with them. They've now done their first visit to uh, D. Winnea Radio, uh, looking at the equipment, how to use it, how to get their things online, um, and also uh, aired for people to listen to. Uh, they've been putting all their reports together, and I think they're looking for a winner to be picked, which will be here in our archive as well, in the Iraq section of the Parallel Lives Network. Um, we've provided all the certificates to them as well for those that completed the Radio and You training course. And we're just waiting to get an invitation to a Zoom call online where the Diwaniya Governor himself will be presenting the certificates that we've created. So really looking forward to that. And in addition to that, something that came out of the blue that we weren't expecting, um, you might remember the photograph last time of me on a Zoom call to a room full of people in Iraq when my colleague, uh, Dr. Ahmed Bahir, our special representative in Iraq, actually signed the uh, MOU with the governor. Uh, well, there were TV cameras that were present as well. Pretty much forgot about it, to be honest. And before we knew where we were, we got a link, three-minute uh, report that went out on Iraqi national television, talking to people about uh, what we were looking to do, training particularly women to get involved in the media and creating media content. The good thing about that is actually been contacted by quite a few other people, universities, as well as media representatives, and had our first uh, conversation with another radio station yesterday as well, talking about how we could help them develop some content. So that was good news, really excited about being on Iraqi national television. Um, managed to catch up with uh, these guys here, two of three. I'm gonna post uh, the actual interview with all three of them, only two of them could make it, so we'll do, uh, we'll do another one. And these guys were the winners of my um, SDG Film Festival uh, Documentary Media Center Showcase Award. Um, I awarded them £100 sterling, which I've sent to them. Um, and they made this 10 minute documentary about a school that was set up by this lady in 2001 to help scavengers, um, children that uh, actually live in sort of right on the very edges of society in Jakarta, in Indonesia. And with the power of her, uh, her own personality, she set up this school, drew lots of teachers to her. Um, and I have over 100 pupils now who regularly attend the school. Um, getting fed, uh, all the media equipment, that kind of stuff. So really looking forward to seeing what we can do to move beyond them winning the award into becoming members of the Parallel Lives Network and doing some stuff as well. So it was great to catch up with these guys, well-deserved winners. Um, and on the blog post where I'll be posting this as well, uh, there'll be a link to the film that's actually on the YouTube channel, which we've uploaded. As part of the Parallel Lives Network, obviously, we're covering those 100 uh, and 18 countries across uh, the global south on the majority world, that's Central and South uh, America, the whole of Africa, um, Middle East and North Africa, South Asia and Southeast Asia. And the great thing about being able to do that is it's also underpinned and powered by a lot of the community engagement work, community comms if you like, 
work that we do here in Leicester, myself and Tina, who's behind the camera today. Um, and one of the things that we got we got involved in and do quite a lot here with eco schools in Leicester is the Great Big Green Week. And this was a, a campaign that was created for primary schools to come together and secondary schools as well uh, with the build up to COP26 in Glasgow, that kind of climate climate conference. And what was great about that is we uh, managed to interview quite a few young school pupils, um, covered some of their climate march, which we had a very successful climate march here in the city. And then we hosted a news day for five hours, contacting lots of different people, catching up with lots of different pupils, talking about what they were doing. So really enjoyed that. So that was something that we managed to link with what we were doing um, internationally, as well as what we were doing here locally. Um, this weekend that's just gone, we ran our very first language cafe as well with Carol and Shahi, um, two people that support all of the uh, translation and language work that we do here, particularly with Iraq. Um, we've been starting to do our first couple of English courses to Iraq. Um, lots of interest across North Africa in that, uh, those kind of courses as well, so really looking forward to seeing how that one develops. But the three of us got together under our name of Lingo Links and we organised our first language cafe. People being able to use and uh, improve their conversational English. The great thing about that again with the Parallel Lives Network is a lot of the people that live here in Leicester due to its very wide and broad multicultural makeup with lots of new arrival communities is a lot of the stuff that we cover in the archive. Uh, people are from those countries that are actually here in Leicester. So we're trying to create that as a bridge where people can then bring items like newspapers to put in the archive, old photographs, um, maybe some old film very much building on that uh, project I was talking to you about last month, the Uganda 50, 50th anniversary of Ugandan Asians coming to Leicester in 1972. So uh, a really interesting project there. The Language Cafe will be the first Saturday of every month and it was actually live streamed on Facebook. So I'll put a link to the Documentary Media Centre Facebook page for you to look at and you'll be able to see the kind of conversations that we had, Palestine, Guantanamo Bay, a real broad mix of conversations. Talking of uh, projects that we've got in the pipeline, <clears throat> we've been uh, talking to uh, an old friend of the Documentary Media Centre, uh, Paul Vernon. He, he's um, submitted quite a few documentaries over the years to our Documentary Film Festival that we've organised here in Leicester. Um, and he's come across some of his dad's old 35mm slide photographs from a visit to Tanzania um, with a little dip over into Kenya as well, I think in 1968. So he's looking to make an experimental film with the footage. Um, and some of the photographs as well. And this is one of the photos that he sent to us as well. So Tanzania from 1968, I wonder how different it is. Some of the landscape, particularly some of the urban shots uh, that he's got as well. So, he, so a bit of a crowd, crowd scene here at a small stadium. You know, is that now a big stadium? Does it exist anymore? So hopefully we'll be able to uh, geo position some of those as well to see what, what's going on. Um, and then finally, we just want to send out our best wishes and congratulations to all of the pupils at the Andrew Green Foundation School in Haiti. Um, these guys do incredible stuff. We've, we've contacted them over the last two years talking about things they're interested in, what their career aspirations are as well, um, due to uh, you know being in Haiti, what do they want to do from the school now. Andrew Green was a worker for the UN that was killed in an earthquake, um, the big earthquake a couple of years ago. Um, and his twin brother, and his best friend set up the Andrew Green Foundation as a way of keeping his memory alive and supporting him. He was, he, he was killed in the earthquake. Uh, so they've set up the school. Uh, fantastic head teacher here, um, really does amazing stuff. Creative use of WhatsApp, local radio, um, lots of gang related issues in the area as well. So these guys get into school is just a, is an amazing achievement every day. And obviously just when they were setting, uh, sitting down to do exam season, there was the presidential um, assassination, uh, they've had another earthquake and all that sort of stuff and the incredible students here, the reason we put the photo up was there's a 100% pass rate at the baccalaureate. So you know, a real valuing of education, so congratulations to those guys. It's a real achievement to see what they do and it's quite humbling as well, to be honest. And just finally, you know, you can follow us on our social media um, uh, at the PL underscore network or look at the Parallel Lives .net network website. You can send us through um, an email, an update of uh, whatever you've got going on, anything you want us to share and promote. Obviously we've got COP26 coming up the end of October, the beginning of November. I know we're talking to Kavita about doing something in India, 
but we've also had a request from uh, Baslu, the CEO of BNNRC, which is the Bangladesh Network for NGO Radios, and for Rob, myself, uh, Dr. Rob Watson and myself to organise a UK-Bangladesh community media climate dialogue conversation, talking about uh, what we're doing in both of our our, our specific locations, so the UK and uh, Bangladesh. So looking forward to, to doing that. Many, many more things coming up in the pipeline. Um, university starts for me this week as well, so the UK universities return. So we'll start building some of our work across various partnerships that we've got across the um, various universities in the UK into our bulletins going forward as well. So if you've got any partnerships with local universities or educational establishments, schools, community outreach, anything you want, like the school there in Indonesia, please get in touch and we'll see what we can do to support you. Okay, thanks very much. Stay safe and I look forward to seeing you soon.